Okay, so let's uh, let's start the lecture. So um, if you're taking this class for, for credit, uh, so we have a, a sign-up sheet which will uh, pass along. So uh, just uh, sign or put a cross, whatever, <laughs> uh, for each lecture. Uh, so you have to uh, you have to attend all lectures for uh, to get the credit for the class. Okay, all right, thanks. So I don't know. There is a problem with the projector. Looks like it's broken or something. I don't know. It's not working. It doesn't switch on. So uh, hopefully somebody's coming. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll go to the <laughs> to the whiteboard with all the technology. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> five computers, cameras. We we'll do the old fashioned way. Okay. I, I just want to, uh, to to remind you to do this uh, three by three problem. Has anybody tried that? What kind of method do you use to... I don't really care. You can... <laughs> <laughs> you accept the but you have to be able to mathematically prove that uh, the 3 by 3 converges slow down when epsilon gets, gets smaller. When you get is uh, very small, it's going very fast. That's a threshold. But then if you use different equation methods, you will get different number of... No, I don't go outside there. That's all. <laughs> Only goes side L for three by three and the four by four. One converges very slowly when you are getting smaller and getting slower, but at some point it's very fast. When you say equal to zero, two is array, right? Mm -hmm. For four by four, I don't expand it, it converges uniformly. I think it's a reasonable thing. To <laughs> <laughs> well, it's reasonable, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it happens. <laughs> Nobody's going to do that. Put up a price. <laughs> so has anybody done it? So, OK. Uh, so you have Gau Sada. I use SOR. No, just Gau Sada. Well, Mika, you go to one. <laughs> and uh, why well, can't do SOR, but don't be that fancy. Uh, do three by three, then four by four. If it's a difficult, don't. Don't worry, <laughs> but it's three by three, okay? <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, just do it, uh, you will learn something, I hope. Uh, so our uh, uh, projector is broken. Yeah. Uh, so I, I still have this things you gave me. So the idea is that uh, we have uh, a u equal to f. about the expanded system as you 
Again, let me remind you to do the three by three problem, okay? <laughs> and, and the four by four. I, I will have that example. That example, again, uh, is A equal to A0 plus epsilon identity. A0 is equal to <coughs> 1, negative 1, 0, negative 1, 2, negative 1, 0, negative 1, 1. B is equal to negative 1, negative 1, 2, doesn't matter. So you do the, this example is important. I, I could not emphasize more. You look at the example, then uh, the expanded instance, uh, you have this x, uh, so uh, anyway, you solve this ax equal to b. Look at the Gauss side that method. I want you to uh, matter a little lab, math lab, whatever program you want to write. They mathematically prove it, okay? <laughs> this is a three by three matrix, okay? And uh, every time at the beginning of the class, I'm gonna ask who has done it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm gonna write uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, expanded system. So this example tells me is that, uh, uh, so uh, it's a, from three by three to four by four. Otherwise, I have this vi. It's what I call auxiliary space. Then you have this pi of i is from vi to v. So in that case, the pi i vi is a super subspace of v. Okay, and uh, uh, sometimes the pi i. Uh, uh, if vi is actually a subspace already, pi i would be sometimes I call it as it says include it, it's just include it. <coughs> so in this case, uh, so so I'm going to write the assumption. Assumption is that uh, this original V can be written as uh, I equal to 1 to J pi I V I. This is a space decomposition, what I call it. Okay. And uh, so this actually means that I, I can, if I this is a, if I if I consider the V of two times equal to V one cross V two, uh, this the product space. So V two ta is equal to V one to V j is a sub is a is U V two ta. Then I do a pi two ta. I call it a pi one pi two pi j. That's actually from V two ta. To V is subjective. So this means that uh, <coughs> for any V in V, then you this the V two that not necessarily unique. Okay, this is not uniqueness. Uh, the redundancy is all the secret, okay. Uh, such that V equal to pi V tilde with is sigma I equal to one to J. So that's my uh, is this ooh, it's not even supposed to come down. That's a portable, presumably. Is it a secret? Oh, here we go. So that's my setup. <coughs> then I'm going to do a. So I'm going to just look outside there for this one. So in this case, uh, so the. Um,
the, the, the nice thing is about is that, uh, again, uh, I have this, uh, the, you put this example that uh, x equal to example x equal to uh, e, maybe x x equals this is x one x two x three that's equal to x one tilde x one tilde e one plus x two E4. This E4 is equal to this E4 is equal to 111. E1 is equal to 100. Uh, so this this x would be equal to you can say a pi or somehow this is uh, so I, I actually in my notes I got a P but this guy is this pi. Is, uh, that, that's my uh, three by three matrix. This is R three, R four to R three. So the uh, that's the example. Now you better come back here. So a a u equal to f. So u equal to pi of u tilde. All right. So I get. Um, a of pi u tilde equal to f. Then I do a pi prime here. So this is my, my expanded system, A of tilde equal to uh, uh, pi prime A pi. So this is my expanded system. Okay, this is the expanded system. A of tilde, A tilde, U tilde equal to F tilde. This is F tilde. This is the expanded system. So what I have is a four by four expanded system I just showed you before. The, the, the main idea, one of the main ideas I'm just convey here is that I'm going to solve the expanded system. So if you do the expanded system, so you do the iteration method for the expanded system. So you do the u of uh, m equal to u m minus one plus b tilde f tilde minus a tilde. So this is supposed to be a simple method like Gauss side L. Okay. Uh, now the question is that, uh, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to just, uh, so I'm going to just multiply this, uh, I put this pi on both sides, if I do pi here. <coughs> if you do this one, what are you going to get? This, I'm going to, so this would be my u of m, right? If you look at this, uh, this thing is here. u of m equal to u m minus one. Plus this is a pi b two. It's called it's called b f minus a u. If you just write everything out, this b is equal to uh, pi b tilde pi prime. So these two things are equivalent. Or maybe if you do not think about equivalence, is that uh, if, you, if you have a, an iterative method for the expanded system, you automatically have an iterative method for the original system. Okay? So this expanded system is just for, for good to understand, easier to understand. Like this 3 by 3, 4 by 4, let me repeat this problem again. So now the thing is that uh, what is the convergence? The convergence is that uh, for this, ex this one, the convergence is that uh, um, what is the convergence? Uh, so the 
Uh, th yeah, that one there. I minus V A for the A norm square. That's equal to one minus. Look at those ones here. That's the soup. V to the A equal to one. Then there's the inf. Pi of V tilde equal to V. Then what I proved this. Uh, did I prove it? I did. I proved it. Right? Oh. Oh, I proved it, yes. It's a B tilde, inverse V tilde, V tilde. I consider this is a beautiful theorem, okay? But now, uh, let, me, let me, because you will see magic. I use this one, I can, uh, if I have the slides, I uh, can probably. Because usually you teach a multiple domain decode, you only need one, one semester of teacher in four hours, okay? Because, uh, <laughs> because of this magic I done did. Okay, all the things that, okay, let's look outside, uh, for example. Uh, let's, do, uh, let's look outside. Uh. So this is AM tilde. This is AM tilde. It's equal to AIJ, you know. <coughs> AIJ is, uh, what is AIJ? If you look at the things here, this, what is AIJ here? A tilde is AIJ. Okay, we can do AIJ. Remember, this is a, this is a pi uh, prime A. Pi, right? That's equal to what? That's equal to pi one prime, pi J prime, then you have A. Then you have pi one, pi j. That, that's your guy, okay? <laughs> this is a kind of a. Uh, so what is aij? Aij is uh, uh, is pi j. Is that the j column? Yeah, the pi. That's pi i prime. A pi j. Okay, this is from v j to v i. Pi I, so we, pi I is from, pi I is from V I to V. Pi I prime is from V prime to V I prime. So now you write this uh, A two time equal to D plus L plus U. It's outside there, okay? I'm going to do the diagonal lower triangle. This is U would be uh, equal to L prime. Okay, it's the, it's the, it's the, this is symmetric for a semi-definite problem. Okay, I, I'm doing, I'm sort of the, the simplest linear algebra, which is outside the method, but I'm going to do this in a very abstract fashion so that I can derive all the other wonderful methods. So they, 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 they so now you know the outside of is that uh, or Jacobi for the matter. So you, you want to do this D R tilde. It's gonna be equal to to, to uh, approximate D tilde inverse. Okay. <coughs> and uh, so I don't know when I have this uh, this thing is uh, too many. So, so if I look outside, if you do Jacob B tilde, is equal to, if you do this R tilde, and R tilde inverse plus L tilde inverse. This is what I call a modified Jacobi. You remember? And there's another one I call a modified Gaussian. Okay. <clears throat> so the 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 theorem I'm going to prove is that. Uh, 
So if you look at this one here, this is like the subspace solver. By the way, this AII, uh, never mind. Uh, uh, I'm just, uh, you can just think about, I do a block outside the method, okay? And then I'm gonna say, okay, on the which condition the block outside is gonna convert, all right? And uh, the assumption is that uh, uh, this R2 tabla, if this R tuta, if you do R tuta bar, okay. if the R tuta bar is the semi transient version, going to R tuta prime bar R tuta plus minus R. Is the symmetric positive definite? Symmetric positive definite. Symmetric positive. This uh, the symmetric part of definitely. This is like a, a, the symmetric version is symmetric part of definitely. This is actually the less sufficient condition for convergence. Then, uh, then the block. Uh, this implies that uh, the block goes at the block uh, modified. It. Uh, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, we need your help. <laughs> uh, so this is what we converge is. But then furthermore, now I'm going to do the B tuta bar inverse is equal to I plus R prime. So this is a pure linear algebra, okay? Uh, but on, on, uh, so the reason I, I'm doing, look at this, what I was trying to do, okay? I want to, uh, co uh, to estimate the convergence, I have proved every one of this step, okay, in, in the first Did you have the, so I sent you the lecture. Yeah, the slides here. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I'm going to put the, the slides online here. Okay. Yeah, so anyway, I have, uh, so you should, I have all the detail of the proof there. So now this, I'm just doing, doing pure linear algebra, but this also can be thinking of, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the, the abstraction, I have this VI, it can be a Hilbert space, by the way, a Balata space, or maybe a Hilbert space. So you remember this alternate projection theorem, which is supposed to be a big deal, okay? But I'm going to do a, a linear algebra here. But uh, it's, we're going to do linear algebra in a functional space. But if you don't feel comfortable with functional analysis, do you teach this here? <laughs> yeah, we do teach we do linear algebra. There is no linear algebra here. We'll do a vector space. <laughs> so, uh, so, but, uh, so I want to estimate the things here, okay? So, uh, so what I'm going to do, the proof is that, uh, uh, oh, comes back. So what happened? Did we do something wrong? 
No. Some sort of program. Some, yeah, something, something that. Oh. I mean, log in real quick. Yeah, I think it's working now. Is it showing? Okay, so I'm going to just finish the proof here. So before, <laughs> actually, it's probably better because I do a technical proof here. This is a, okay, so I put the the B tilde. So for the B tilde is equal to R tilde. Uh, R tilde inverse plus L tilde inverse. Right? If you think about this one, where's my, my guy? He's over there. That's a gauss center, right? So you want to compute the things here. B bar. Uh, then uh, B, B tilde bar is equal to B tilde. B tilde of B tilde minus B. So this one equals that. So you want to put the B tilde out. Under linear algebra, uh, but if you use this definition and put that way in there, so you get end up uh, you this R tilde, okay? But this A will be getting cancelled because this inverse equal to this one plus that one. That's what we call the B tilde inverse. It becomes this R tilde inverse. Plus R tilde humus prime, then minus a D, this is important. So, so far, I'm going to just uh, pull this one out, pull this humus out. I pull this humus onto the right, take the humus and put, get to the left. And uh, then I'm going to, this is a key step, but uh, uh, I, don't know this, 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 I don't know how to write these things. Uh, and let's uh, put the B equal to R bar. This looks like, it's like a something for the diagonal. I'm going to put a weak uh, script B. Then I put this a script L is equal to B cross L. So that looks like uh, something that this is the, in the diagonal, this diagonal is the lower triangular part. So if I do this, uh, the U, of course, I'm going to assume this U. Arrow prime. So if you do this, so we notice that uh, D cross L uh, that's equal to actually R bar inverse cross L. That's equal to B tilde inverse. And uh, D cross U it will be equal to prime. So, the another interesting is that D plus L plus U, that's actually equal to, equal to A. That's the original A. So somehow, uh, I got a, a, a kind of modified the decomposition. This is a, a pure linear algebra, but, uh, but it takes a while to to figure this one out, then you have this, we are doing this purely linear. So you have a B tilde bar inverse would be equal to D plus L inverse. And then you have D inverse and uh, G plus U. This is like what you can you see in the linear algebra book for Gaussian elements.
but if you actually, this can be also equal to what? You, you, you pull this one out, how do we do these things? E plus A. You, if you pull this out, Let's see, if I, if I pull this one out, so what, I have, what I'm going to do is the B plus U. Anyway, this will be equal to D plus L plus U and plus L D U minus U. This is equal to A plus, this is equal to A tilde plus L D U. Uh, U must U. So uh, that's actually what I had it before here. Uh, so first of all, why is this one equal to that? Can you derive it? Let's see. Uh, multiply all this out. You just multiply all this out, see what happens. So this is equal to, you multiply this one out as identity plus L D inverse, then D, D plus U, right? That would be D plus U. Uh, then you multiply this, this one multiply by that one is D plus U, right? This one multiplied by this is L. We have L D U as U. So that's actually L plus D plus L plus U. That's equal to that. It's as straightforward as that, OK? If you get this one here, so if you rewrite this uh, formula, is this is this what we want. This proves the theorem. Maybe I should call it lemma. It's too simple. interesting thing is that uh, <coughs> now you put this uh, put this formula together okay is the theorem put this formula together put this formula together you end it up with uh, <coughs> so you have this R tuta the B tuta you have two different formula okay Uh, is this okay now? Yeah, I think so. Oh, but I, I, uh, I can probably turn those things on. You, you want to, can we turn this one on? Yeah, yeah, come on, Actually, it's already on. You can see the, the screen back. I need to switch it. Uh, you have to mirror the screen. You want it to mirror? Yeah. Oh, it's uh, yeah. not already mirrored. Oh, maybe it's not mirrored. technical part of my lecture. <laughs> it's actually pretty uh, timely to have the machine to broke. Otherwise, uh, uh, I want to do it quick. Uh, let's see. Uh, what I'm doing here, I cannot bypass these things. Again, let me remind you, uh, I want to go in here, do this problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want you to prove this one uh, deteriorate, but uh, but I also have to tell you that uh, I want to give you a hint. That at some point, this iteration is very quick. It's, you don't have to wait to zero. 
there's a threshold. You, 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 when you do the analysis, you will see, okay? It doesn't have to be zero. At some point, <laughs> this one uh, converges very quickly. This, uh, you cross that one over. Now, again, you want to, I want you to prove this then, uniformly converged. Three by three problems. So if you don't do it, I'm going to repeat it a hundred times. <laughs> but okay, uh, so this is what I just said that you, uh, you go through this again. So, uh, you know, you do these things. So this is what we proved yesterday. So you have all the subspace solver. You do the Gauss side though. Uh, so this is what I just uh, proved, okay? Right here. This is the most technical part of, uh, of what, so far. <laughs> but, uh, uh, so you do all this proof. Just a simple, the, the, the detail, the importance is you have to identify this uh, LUD. DLU, so you can do the same. Now the wonderful thing is that if you use this, uh, this, uh, this thing I just wrote uh, before, so you just have to, uh, this AIJ is in some form, right? You plug that one in this formula. You take the in soup, you get the things, okay? Let me repeat. I have this formula. This is uh, B tilde. This 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 one, okay. This is actually supposed to be equal to hmm, make some use of it. This is a B tilde. So I should. Have. You know what? This is a <laughs> This is a B tilde. B tilde bar. Okay, this is uh, what we have. <laughs> so then you remember, that guy equal to that. So you, I also have this, uh, this, this zero is equal to the, uh, the units, one minus soup V A equal to one, the units, I V tilde equal to V, the B bar tilde inverse V tilde V tilde. Then the whole thing inverse. Okay? So you, I want to, do, if you use this formula, you get a C0. You write out this uh, whatever it is, you put that in there. It's purely algebra. Then you, C1 is you write this term here. Oh, you don't see this one here? You put that A here. <laughs> there's a plus a tilde here. This is another one which you don't quite see. So this a tilde, because the, so the, there's a tilde, anyway, all this together, this one will become a one here. This becomes this one plus C1. C1 will be this guy. You get this. OK. It's just the. Uh, Straightforward calculation. This is a, a we wrote a paper what, 15 years ago. This is a Journal of American Mathematics Society. We actually spend a, a long, lots of people complain this is a, so difficult to prove to read. But now it becomes an embarrassingly simple. But anyway, uh, this Journal of American Mathematics Society is a pure math journal, so we. We submit this thing. Uh, I think at that point, we're the only paper in American Ireland published. <laughs> but because we wrote this paper in, in, in pure Hilbert spaces. But here, if you do the pure linear algebra after all these years, then uh, uh, they are such a simple proof. Uh, I want to show you one uh, interesting case. If I do the exact subspace solvers, OK? If I do the exact subspace solve, so what happens? Uh, in this case, uh, in this case, R two type gets one is equal to the two type inverse, right? Right? If I put that, this this one will be gone. It becomes a U. This one is gone. So you you have this uh, inequality. You have this equality. And uh, in the subspace cases, so I'm going to look at the, uh, I'm going to 
give you uh, one uh, one formula. So in this case, uh, suppose V equal to sigma Vi, I equal to 1 to G. I'm going to do you in a simple case. Vi is a sub, sub, subspace of V. Then we're going to P of Vi to V to Vi. This is A. This is a P of V Vi. In the A inner product, it's going to be equal to V Vi for A. In this case, this identity becomes the following one, i minus pj, i minus p1, pj minus 1, i minus p1. This is the product of this projection. It's equal to, let's say, 1 minus, uh, equal to that guy. This is I minus B A. This is I minus B A. Let me just say this is I minus B A equal to that guy. I minus B A. I, I, I'm going to show you later on. This is actually is a, is a product of this thing. So you put that one there. So you will see that I minus P J is a product of all this together. This is going to be 1 plus uh, 1 minus 1 C 1 equal to 1 minus 1 plus C0. Uh, so then you, you this, uh, this pi here will be included. It, it's not even there. So uh, you estimate the convergence rate of the, these uh, product operators. OK, maybe I shouldn't get too excited myself. But, <laughs> 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 but, but uh, yeah. do you follow so far? Yeah. I have a question. So for your three by three matrix and four by four matrix, these identities hold hold for both cases, right? Uh, the three examples. So same. So but here you you don't use that. So why why this e equality can get better result for like the you when you and the kernel space? You got to do it. <laughs> you have to do it to appreciate that. But um, yes, uh, either one makes the whole thing not, not different. Do it. Both, uh, well, a tilde is, uh, is uh, the expanded system. You have to use these things here. I'm going to actually, well, I still have not sorted out uh, when you do the semi-definite problem. Semi-definite problem, um, you have to work things on the a range of it, a fabulous complement of it. You cannot quite define the norm. If you have semi-positive definite matrix, uh, you only get a semi-norm. So the original problem uh, is a symmetrical positive definite problem. This three by three problem, epsilon is positive. Epsilon equal to zero, do it separately, <laughs> okay. Epsilon is positive, is always symmetrical positive definite. So the 4 by 4 is a semi It's a singular matrix. So then you have to compute the things here. But I, I just want to, 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 to warn you, if you don't do it right, it can be complicated calculation. But it's a 3 by 3. <laughs> but still, uh, if you do a, but again, you just have to do this homework. I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a I'm a, I'm a, uh, I cannot emphasize enough. You, you got to do the calculation to appreciate that. Right? Once you understand the 3 by 3 and the 4 by 4, I, I will say you, you understand half of the multigrade and domain decomposition. I'm not exaggerating. Uh, and also algebraic multigrade I'm going to talk next week. Okay, uh, so I got this identity. I suppose I'm concerned that I have complete all the detailed proof, or oh, except some trivial calculation, you have to do it. And uh, so now the question is how do we make use of it? So, um, what did I 
دو This is a uh... Okay uh... Well, actually, I even have a proof here, okay? All right. But anyway, I had this formula here, the point here, this R tilde, when R tilde equals to D tilde inverse, you just calculate all this out, okay? It's just a straightforward um, algebraic manipulation. They, 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 uh, then when you do the multi grid, uh, another thing is what I, I call, this is what I call the substance correction method. Uh, the substance correction method is the following, and the, uh, here's the deal, and uh, this is how I actually derived this method before, and uh, uh, so, oh yeah, this is, <laughs> uh, don't forget this problem, <laughs> okay. <laughs> That, uh, I have this decomposition V equal to sigma I I I V I. Then I did an expanded system, I did a Gauss ladder. Okay. But uh, traditionally, you know, that's kind of weird method because you, why? <laughs> But it's not so natural to do a singular matrix. You, I think this is only something we realize later on. But uh, but you can do it another way in, in a way it's more more convenient. Is that uh, suppose you want to do a, a u of k or u of a to, to, to u k plus one. So what? So this is what I call a subspace correction. What do you say? You form the residual, right? You form the residual. This is called R. You remember R equal to f minus a of u k. Right? You form the residual. You look at the residual equation. A equal to R. So now you want to, uh, to solve this guy. But I want to restrict it to the pi i vi. I want to restrict it to, in this case, I do a pi i prime. The restriction. But uh, but I want to only do this uh, e. I only only I only correct the residual on the subspaces. Okay, I want to only solve this e i equal to pi i e because I want to solve this because you you remember the e should be equal to no no. Uh, I I want to solve this e on the subspace. You will remember the e is equal to pi i. E can be written as a pi i e i, right? So I only want to solve a component of it. Namely, how about I do this uh, pi i prime a of pi i e i? I do this one here. So uh, this is pi, this is this is r, this is residual. <coughs> so this is my. Uh, so I solve this guy here. When, it, when you solve this one here, so you solve this one approximately. In this case, this e i makes a hat would be equal to the inversion of this one. Inversion of this one is actually going to be pi i r i pi i prime and the pi i prime. This will be, you form the residual, you restrict the residual of the cost to the subspaces, you solve the subspace problem approximately, then you, you update 
then you do the V uh, is a V plus EI. Uh, you, you basically equal the, the U UK. I think the, you, you, you do this UK. You do this UK to U. You form the, the U. You do the UK, you form the residual, you project the residual into the subspaces, you solve the residual equation, which is to have Ri, then you update this uh, this V. You, you, you do this kind of correction of the ice component. If you look outside the L, that's the ice equation. You solve it, you add it up. So you do all this way to i equal to 1 to j. Then in the end, uh, uk plus 1 is, is, is your v. That's pretty much what I call a success of subspace correction. Let me uh, repeat to you. Uh, this way, in a way, is a more natural method. If you think about Gaussian, that's precisely how the Gaussian does the business. You, saw, you form the residual. You project your residual into the subspaces. This is what we're doing. This is what in the multivariate language you call the you call the you call the restriction. And uh, then you solve the restricted equation. Then you update. Next time you have to go back. Okay. <laughs> then you then you go back. You, if after this one you're done, you go back, you form the residual again, you go i equal to one, the all the way down. At the end of the day, uh, at the end of the cycle, you update. This is this kind of inner iteration and outer iteration, right? This is what I call a sub success of subspace correction. Does that make sense? Thing? Um, but but in the sub the subspace may overlap, so yeah, this is a redundancy is what I want. So, so some residual may be counted twice. Now the if you, but the thing is that uh, uh, so you are saying that uh, this is still consistent because every time I do this recursively, uh, you see uh, I form the residual with the updated one. Even the redundancy doesn't matter. Oh, okay. If you do additive one, you have a progress. Then we get a precondition. Where did I put that? You you you, ha you ask a very good question. Uh, uh, for example, if I already, I think the one way to answer your question is that if I already get the exact solution, are you going to create something uh, which is uh, spurious or not? If you already get the exact solution, this is equal to zero. When you do all this, this has to be zero. It, is, it will not give you anything spurious. Thing. Why did I put that? I call the subspace. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. This is uh, oh, uh, this is not good. What I'm doing? I'm doing a parallel subspace correction. In this case, uh, I do it uh, simultaneously. Wait a minute. Is that what I'm saying? This is your asking. This is your asking. You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was the, I was explaining this one. Okay. I was explaining this one. I do it recursively. This one you do it. Uh, uh, you're right. I'm sorry. I, this one, is this the same thing? Wait a minute, something's wrong here. No, 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 no. no. I put the V here, okay? This is always the, uh, yeah, this is different. Okay. okay, this is your case, already the old one. This one, next one, I. Ooh. Yeah, right, now you will have redundancy. This one, you don't have problems. Yeah. 
This is like outside there. This one is Jacoby. You have redundancy. You may not convert. You're absolutely right. This is like a Jacoby method. This is Jacoby method, by the way. Jacoby method doesn't always convert. You have to, when you have redundancy, you have to rescale the problems. But, but for me, for the next scheme, you may not do a parallel things. Again, you're, you're, you're hit to the point. This is the, the sequential algorithm. It's not so parallel. But what, <laughs> I, yeah, Jacobi method, it, sometimes people like to use it because it's a parallel. You, this is what, that's why I call it parallel subscript correction. You, you, you do parallel, but you may not convert. But you use this as a preconditioner. And uh, another way is that uh, this one, you get a better convert, but it's not so powerful. Well, that's the life, okay? <laughs> we have to, but the thing is that uh, there are all kinds of ways of parallelize this Gaussian method. This also, uh, for example, in the deep learning algorithm now, I mean, this, this uh, um, uh, I don't know why, if, if you think about the deep learning algorithm, they, 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 they have this uh, to randomize the uh, gradient descent method. That's why it's done, the, you can do it in parallel, you can also do it in sequential. If you do it in parallel, that's the Jacobi. If you do it in, se in sequence, that's called now. Now, I don't know if you're interested in that kind of algorithm, Here's the place you really want to, you would understand what's really going on. I, very, very important question. Very, very, uh, very much central to the whole issue. Uh, when you do the Jacobi as an iterative procedure, you, uh, uh, this is like the, when you do the learning algorithm, when you have the fixed linear rate, if you do the fixed linear rate, the loss function, I don't know, maybe if you, have, if you, I don't know if you do a deep learning, <laughs> the loss function may not always decrease. It actually probably go to another <laughs> places. But I, I, um, that's in a way it's like Jacobi without the scaling. Um, to, we do linear problem. Linear problem here is that the redundancy, this algorithm may not convert. But it gives you a precondition that is good. Okay? This one, it converges on this assumption. This, uh, uh, this means the subspace solver converts. If you restrict the problem to the subspace, this is a this is the sufficient condition for the subspace problem to be convergent. Okay, look at this algorithm here. Even though at this point it's become so simple, but you still need a little bit of time. Okay, do your three by three problem, they understand. <laughs> okay. but, uh, and they, uh, it, it takes a little time to, to appreciate these things. Okay, now they, uh, if you do an iterative, you do the recursively, and the uh, uh, gauss sidel method, if you do the exact solver, the subspace problem certainly convert, right? Why? What iteration? I uh, in that case, gauss sidel always convert. Otherwise, you get if you do Jacobi, you have to kind of uh, uh, scale the problem so that the redundancy, which you realize. And even without redundancy, the, ja the Jacobi method may not converge. Okay. But the idea in Jacobi, though, is that uh, hmm, okay, can you sh show the, the slide with the, ja the Jacobi? The if you look at the different components in the solution, they're solved only by certain subspaces. I mean, here, I mean, for example, on the fine scale, if you just do Say one iteration, you're not getting any convergence on the, on the on the low modes. Yeah, but so that's why I need redundancy. I want right. to introduce all the low mode into it. 
Right, but th th those converge because of the, of the, of the coarse grades. Yeah, but they still qualitatively converge if you only have a fine grade. If you want to converge as fast, you put right. the blue mode in. So if you are to, 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 to modulate you the things here, if you write AX equal to B, so there's a loss function. Well, but I'm just trying to say you want to minimize the properties of half of X transpose A of X minus B transpose X. So this x, uh, this x exact solution is the odd mean. L. It's called a star. That's the minimization of the quadratic things. Now I'm asking you, okay, do a gradient descent method. Okay. In the which direction? In the x i di e i direction. If you do these things, that's the Jacobi method. If you do it the uh, that's exactly the Jacobi method. Um, but uh, they don't really do these the things uh, with an exact linear rate. It's pretty much like this Richardson iteration I was doing. I, uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, it will take a while to get it, to appreciate these things. It's all a matter of uh, subspace correction. You solve things on certain components, it means that you're solving, if you think about it more abstractly, you're solving something in the subspace. They sometimes put the patches, just the local patches together. That would be I call it a subspace. Or maybe in terms of linear algebra, it's a block Jacobian. If you do the in sequence, if you use the most updated one, then you are, if you use most of that's the Gauss sign. If you do it in parallel, that's Jacobi. Now, if you go to this uh, machine learning things, uh, you can draw this analogy. Machine learning is just very more, much more complicated. My philosophy is that you have to understand the simple problem first. <laughs> if you do a, a um, but there's are issues, but we, we may not have time to do it. But you, you may pick certain components. Uh, here I do one, two, two, yeah. But it's actually a pace that, let's say you do it random. You pick the components random. This kind of randomized uh, uh, gradient descent mass. But here, we can talk about randomized Jacobian Gauss side now. And uh, uh, all these things are very closely related. So uh, the interesting thing here is that um, when we, because we're doing linear algebra, when you do linear algebra, this uh, su subspace correction is precisely uh, is precisely the mathematically equivalent to the modified Jacobian and the modified gauss side. They are, they are mathematically equivalent. I don't know what kind of a, uh, Again, I was doing the, you, you form the residual, you correct the residual on the subspace simultaneously, they add them together, that's precisely the modified Jacobi for the expanded system. It requires a little proof, okay? But uh, uh, this uh, successive subspace correction, you form the residue, you project the residue into the subspace, you, sub you solve this subspace problem approximately with this R tilde. Then you add that component into the solution, then you update your solution, then you form the residue, go to the next uh, block. That is the precisely equivalent to the modified Gauss side. Again, uh, this is need to prove it, but uh, this is again a mini algebra. I hope you uh,
when actually we do multiple method, I'm going to come back to this later. Suppose you have this things so are nested. I don't know what, uh, where should I point to? I should point there? Oh, or maybe that's my computer. I should, okay. <laughs> so there's another version of this algorithm. You, so far, I have this Gauss side now, Jacobi Gauss side now. Another version is a kind of subspace correction, parallel subspace correction, and successive subspace correction. They are totally equivalent. But there's another special case where I call it, if, if they are subspace or nested, like a multigrid. I don't know if you study multigrid in, uh, in your class. Huh? This is a sub. Uh, but anyway, this will call the fine grid smooth and a cross grid correction if you do these things. So what you do here is that uh, um, I, I'm going to come back to this lady. You probably take me a while, too. but I just want to to point out to the fact that uh, if you do the cost grid correction, fine grid correction, uh, even this is cost, this is fine. V one is a cost and subspace of V two. If you do all these things recursively, you get the same algorithm. I'm going to. Uh, uh, yeah, again, uh, if you not have not seen the multiple method, I want you to you go home today to look at my slides. Then we'll come back to the talk next time if you ever you care to learn the things. Okay. So what I'm just telling you is that uh, if this is subspace are nested, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The last one. There's another way to implement this algorithm. You, because your subspaces, you, you start them from the, uh, you, you can implement this guys recursively. It's like call yourself, you do re recursion, you know? And uh, you do recursively, you get a much more efficient implementation. But they are actually equivalent, mathematically. This is not so obvious here, but I, I don't want to get you to too, too much of uh, details here, but I, you, uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, uh, there are three equivalent formulations of the algorithm I've done so far. Number one is the gauss sider iteration for the expanded system. Okay. Let's think about the sequential method. The sequential method. Then you can do the method of subspace correction. What I mean is you f form the residual, you correct the residual, you update, you repeat. Okay. Another thing is in the, for the nasty subspace case, you can implement it like a multigrid method. This is historically is a big step, or at least this is how I, I, I realized that this is all equivalent. And uh, it is in, mathematically, it helps us to understand this algorithm in a different way. And uh, algorithmically, it also tell, give you an idea how to design new algorithms. For example, if I have a linear problem we're doing here, now you use a long linear optimization problem. People ask me, okay, I said I want to do multivariate for deep learning. Then I said, how? <laughs> this is, it looks totally irrelevant. But if you really have some level of understanding how the multi-level algorithm really works, it is my strong belief that uh, you can speed up, uh, I'm hoping this. You see how much multigrid will speed up my linear solver, then you will see the potential. I'm going to show you very quickly. And uh, again, uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, implementation, I will uh, I will let you to read my notes first if you're interested. Otherwise, I'll get you too much technical. I think one technical proof for one lecture is probably enough. <laughs> 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 but I'm going to okay. Uh, let's say this some some theory and all that. I let's just forget. I don't know what this is. It's kind of. I'm gonna uh, tell you. Um, or maybe should we, should we take a little break? Uh, yeah, I mean we have a uh, half hour, so we can take a break. Take a break. Yeah, I take a five minutes break. And then in twenty five minutes, I teach you multiple domain decomposition methods. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay.